The last couple of weeks have been pretty cool being able to follow the real life IndyCar series around in Project Cars 2 to the tracks that they race on week to week. It's almost like having a real, officially licensed, officially up to date IndyCar game. Of course, Project Cars 2 is officially licensed, but I digress. We are racing today in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin at the beautiful Road America Circuit. Probably, I would say, if not America's premier road course, certainly uh, in the top three, I would say, and that's probably selling it a bit short. An absolutely lovely four mile circuit here, very, very fast and very, very flowing. Uh, it's just kind of a classic road course. I'd put it kind of up there with Spa or any of the European style circuits. I would say it's a shame that Formula One doesn't race here, but then again, they would ruin it. They would pave all of the runoff areas and take away all of the character that this track has. As you can see, I'm driving a Honda-powered IndyCar and aero-kitted IndyCar in this race today, and it's the HH Greg special that was driven uh, in 2016 by Carlos Munoz. We got a 16 lap race here, and that's gonna take a while, so let's not waste any more of your time. Let's get right to the racing. So here we come down for the start at Road America. No formation lap because that would take five ever. We've got Graham Rahal and Simon Pagino directly ahead of me. I think I've got Scott Dixon in the road just ahead. Very narrow front straightaway here, so it's gonna be very difficult to get a good start as we're underway at Road America and already getting held up behind Pagino, just kind of following him through, kind of being as careful as I can be early on here as I dip a wheel off. That's not being careful. Now we're gonna try a Tony Kanon style move around the outside, get shoved out on the dirt by uh, Pagino there. I was not gonna take a big risk. I was already kind of taking a big risk by driving around the outside. Now we're gonna get a really good run off of the corner, but had to lift off and get on the brakes just a little bit behind Pagano because I got such a good run, but we're gonna pass Pagano down into station five here on the opening lap, getting a really good run all the way at the top of sixth gear. And send it underneath Dixon and around Joseph Newgarden as well, and now up behind Ryan Hunter Ray, underneath the Corvette bridge, locked the rear brakes up a little bit. Newgarden was up across the curb, I'm up across the curb. Oh, so I really screwed up that corner right there. Got a big push. And Newgarden tries to respond up the inside, couldn't quite do it. And now the part of the course that I really don't like, the carousel, because I get such bad understeer through here, I just eat the tires off the cars. Newgarden tried to drive around the outside of me, didn't quite make it work as we go through the kink here. Uh, and that's going to be a key to today's race, this tire where the reds just are not working for me in the carousel. So we're going to have to go to black wall tires pretty early on in this race as I go across the curbs there. Whew. Dixon's coming. Made a little bit of contact there with Scotty D. And out across the curbs again just killing all my momentum on these red tires. I really need to make hay while the sun shines on these things. And right now it's not really being made as Dixon's going to the inside. I tried to defend, couldn't quite get it done. But my defense is driving around the outside and this time I actually make the corner on like lap one. So that's a good thing. So can I get a run on Newgarden? I'm gonna have to do it in this section of the course and then hope that he doesn't pass me <laughs> on the uh, on the carousel because I really struggle there. Breaking fairly early there, didn't really get through there particularly well. Maybe braked a little too early. I didn't quite get the car slowed down in time again. Didn't really get it slowed down for the Corvette bridge. Got through that kink very well. And out onto the runoff area. Thankfully they did pave that, so I guess they are expecting Formula One after all. Look at this push. I ain't got nothing. I'm gonna have to burn a push to pass just trying to keep Pagano behind me. Are we really gonna go side by side through the kink? Yep, we will. Oh boy, we made it stick. I'm not really sure how, but we did. That was uh, gutsy by Pagano, gutsy by me too, to be honest with you. He's still there. 
Pagano just rode two corners around the outside of me. I'm not sure how that all worked out, but it did. And he's still there. But I got a better drive off of the final corner, so bye-bye Pagano for now. But he's got to run down the main straightaway. He's got a big toe. He's trying to go around the outside. That's not going to work. Uh, but it's going to work because I'm going to get up across the curb again. And here comes Pagano down to the inside. Woo! I'm on the push to pass. I'm on the button. I'm on the button. I'm going to try to pass Pagano here. Absolutely putting my car all the way underneath his rear wing. And we do it. Can we pull a board A? Nope, not a two-for-one deal at Target. I almost said Kmart, but I figured it was more appropriate to say Target on that particular particular account because of the car I was trying to pass. But then again, Target does not have the discounts that Kmart has, so that's why I could not get two-for-one at Target. Oh, look at that car just sliding off the corner. Not really wanting to obey my commands certainly not willing to obey in the uh, carousel we're gonna do this again are we Pagano two laps in a row yep he's gonna stick it around the outside that time that time he got smart he backed out he backed out of the throttle oh but I can really tell the tires are really starting to struggle I don't see any of the AI cars in the pits yet, so I don't really want to come in at this point. I want to see if I can try to chase down Scott Dixon. I'm running my fastest laps of the race, so we're really not quite off the pace to the point where I feel like I need to really come in. The, really, the place I'm really losing is the freaking carousel. Outside of that, everything else is pretty good. You can just see how much the car is starting to slide, though. The tires are definitely wearing very quickly. So that's certainly going to be a concern. And there goes Pagano trying to stick it in there. I continue to make trouble for myself by running over those very large curbs and catching the middle of my chassis on the transition and actually picking all four wheels off the ground and not really particularly making it easy on myself to be able to drive the car. That was better through the carousel, but again, Pagano's going to be there for the third lap in a row. We're going to be side by side coming out of the carousel through the kink, side by side, all the way down the back straightaway. Oh my gosh, and into Canada corner we're going to go side by side once again. And the last of the late breakers, as John Heindahl would say, uh, was me on that particular lap. I actually kind of boxed Pagano out just a little bit. And still, still not completely gone from Dixon. He's still just up the road. If I can put together a decent lap where I don't hit too many of the curves, I think I'll be all right. We do have Pagano beginning to hammer down behind me. Wisconsin-based sponsor in Menards right there, of course. So you know he's going to be all over it. Look at that. Oh, boy. I definitely shut the door on Pagano right there. Oh, the car is so, so loose out of the third corner there. Woo wee! So, so loose. But it's fine because I'm able to hang on to it, so I guess I'm not going to complain too much about it. There we go. Didn't use the curbs that time. Oh, man. The car is all over the place, man. All over the place.
Trying to be gentle on the throttle. Pagino, he's not going to be denied. He was not going to be denied that time. But somehow, I still held him off. At this point, he's going to go in the grass. He's looking everywhere to get around me. This time he's on the inside. Oh, a little bit. A little bit of a hip check. I'm out across the grass. And Pagino finally gets through. Ray Hall almost capitalizes on that. All right, I'm on the button, on the push to pass. You're going to have to try to chase down Pagino. Woo-wee. That was some cowboy stuff right there. And, yeah, I'm catching Pagino big time. So I got my Honda trimmed out. Definitely losing a little bit on the straight, so I probably could have geared the sixth gear a little bit higher. Got to try to catch Pagano here. I know I can catch him. I know I can catch him. Look at this. Look how much I'm catching him here on the straightaway. He's out across the curb. That was a mistake. But I couldn't quite capitalize on it again. I couldn't get the power down out of the Corvette corner there. Now I'm going to lose out. Now it's going to be about keeping Ray Hall behind me. And that's not going to happen. Well, maybe it will because Ray Hall just drove out on the grass. Cut him off there. Cut him off at the pass. Here comes Ray Hall again. Going to dive on the inside. This is the same thing that Pagano was able to pull off on me, but he couldn't quite do it. Uh, the same thing. The same thing. Two laps in a row for me on the exit of that corner. That time unassisted by another car. Alright. Gonna do something not simulation. We're gonna check the HUD real quick. So we got 10 laps to go here. And the front tires are absolutely burned off of it. So now is the time we're going to be coming into the pits this lap. So when I get out onto the straightaway here heading into Station 5, we're going to make sure the pit strategy is right. And everything is set up for me to get the run to the finish. All right, let's see. We're going to request a pit stop. Race strategy. Yes, we've got the Road America strategy on. I actually created a race strategy for this race. Look how pre uh, prepared I was for this race. Oh, and I'm locking up the tire that was the most burned up. That is not the way to do it there, David. It's funny because Ray Hall has actually kind of fallen off just a little bit. He's, he, he's there now, but if I hadn't screwed up that corner or this one... I would actually be pretty much ahead of him by the time we get to here. All right, we got to cut Ray Hall off at the pass, which we do. Boy, that's some dangerous stuff, no doubt about it. Ray Hall is all over the back of me, bounces over the curb, and then has to back out of the throttle. Discretion, better part of Valor there for Ray Hall. Now we're going to see what the pace of this black sidewalk tires are. They're probably going to be crap. But we'll see. As Dixon and Pagano still stay out. But I come into the pits. Getting the car all the way down to the speed limit. And uh, thankfully I don't think got a penalty or anything there. Now I've got to try to find my pit box. Very wide pit lane here at Road America. Another car into the pits looks like Connor Daly. And, oh, several cars in the pits. So that's one of the A.J. Foyt cars coming out. And that is Alex Tagliani. That's one of the Verizon cars in there. And here we come down to get the pit stop underway here at Road America. It looks like we've got a nice ghost car. Why are we not changing the tires? Why did they not change the tires? 
Why did they not change the tires? You've got to be kidding me. Why did they not change the tires? Oh. That's frustrating. Well, we can make it to the end on fuel. Don't think these firestones are going to last, though. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, we're going to see what a, a tire blowout in Project Cars 2 is, I suspect, as the wheel is shaking, but I'm not sure that's particularly a tire issue. God, that's frustrating. Why on earth did they not change the tires? I literally set it in the strategy as Firestone Indy Primary. You can just see, like, oh my god, all right. Well, let's, uh, that says my best Sector 2 time. Maybe we're not in as much trouble as I think we are. All right, I'm going to adjust the strategy. Yeah, I told them to... The strategy is right there. The strategy is right there. That is very annoying. I must have missed some sort of a menu to get my tires changed. Well, we're still sitting in ninth, ninth place? No, we're sitting in 11th place. So we are ahead of a couple cars on track. I just don't know how long I can keep these tires underneath me. It's a tire conservation race now. trying to hit every menu at once and the, the wheel is shaking so uh, uh, the uh, it's not quite working out for me right now well I'll just drive awfully awfully conservative through the kink or through the uh, carousel and I guess we'll just try to nurse these front poor front firestones for another seven laps as I get out on the grass there and almost spin the car all right so let's just pay attention to where I'm driving well, if I'd gone to, if the team had gone to black tires, I would have actually been able to race. Now it's just a conservation effort. We're trying to save the whales, which I'm now going to refer to as these fire, this set of Firestone red tires. Boing! We are really struggling with this, and we're passing more cars. We are passing more cars. So hey, maybe if uh, the AI have to stop twice, we'll be in good shape because we'll actually be able to go for black tires at some point. But I'm going to try to strategize here a little bit. I'm going to stay out as long as I can on these, these tires that are going to probably blow out. It's going to be, this is going to be interesting, there's no doubt about it. Oh, there's wings, wings down in turn one. I just almost ran through some debris down there so somebody had some uh, aji baji as the phrase goes oh yeah there's a bunch of cars slow up here so what's gonna happen here as I look like I'm about to overtake maybe three cars that have potentially all gotten together down there in station five I've got some push to pass. I'm going to use it right now. 
I'm going to use some push to pass right now to try to get around these guys. Got a slow car right here. Oh, it's Tagliani. So we're driving right in the middle of the track. Well, that would explain why the wings look like they were orange. Tires are hanging on for dear life right now. I'm not overheating them. Which I suppose is a good thing. Really got no challenge from behind either. We're up to 8th spot. We've got another car coming into the pit, so we're going to be up to 7th right here. And I'm actually not too far off the car directly ahead of me. As you can just hear, the wheel is really starting to not appreciate what I'm all about right now <laughs> down the front straightaway. If I hadn't had so many G29 issues, or G920 issues, I should say, I would almost think the game is telling me that the tire's about to blow out. Because if I had to guess, this is what it would feel like if uh, your tire's about to blow out, going uh, almost 175 miles an hour. But we'll see. This is uncharted territory for me. In Project Cars 2. Just gotta be a little bit conservative. Again, I'm still seeing that car out in front of me. So amazingly, despite the fact that I've got tires that are absolutely shot and possibly going to blow out on me, the guys out in front are just close enough to still see up the road. As I used another push to pass there, as I head down the back straightaway into Canica, Canada Corner, not Canica Corner. Not sure where I was going with that one. And there was big, big understeer out of Canada. Under where the bridge used to be. The Texaco Haviland Bridge that Mimo Gidley hit one that one time and almost killed himself. One of the many times Mimo Gidley's almost killed himself. Well, we're up to seventh. I do have a car behind me though, according to the mini-map. Which you probably can't see if the replay worked. Which I still don't know that that's going to work. Oh God almighty, I keep hitting that button because uh, I keep bringing up the the pit menu because the wheel keeps shaking and making me uh, touch the wrong button. It's Ray Hall behind me. We've got four laps to go and those tires are not going to last four laps. Uh oh. Well, I still don't know what's going to happen. Uh, is it going to blow? Well, we're about to find out. We're, we're, today, we're going to find out what happens when you completely wear out a, a set of Firestones in Project Cars 2. If it blows, I want it to happen on the back straightaway, please. So I can come into the pits, get some Firestone Blacks, and hopefully not be too... Too, too uh, screwed by it. I mean, we are running seventh. That's right mid pack. So we'll just see. We're 1.7 seconds off my best lap. This is awfully tense. Well, these tires last. We're going to sell a lot of Firestone tires. That's for sure, because uh, I just don't think <laughs> there's no way it can last three more laps now at this point. As the wheel, my personal wheel is just not having it right now. I think the wheel is shaking because it's like, it's afraid. It's afraid what's going to happen when that Firestone finally decides to give up the ghost. Still got four push to passes in the car, and Ray Hall's not really closing down. What's interesting is I've got the AI at 120. 120 and 40 uh, uh, aggression. Which I've found to be my personal favorite 
settings for this game as I go way out across the curb, lose a ton of time. But yeah, theoretically, these guys should be pretty fast, and he's not really closing it in, so despite the fact that I'm driving like an absolute grandma right now, and I think I just accidentally hit the push to pass. So we've got a bunch of extra power that we're not going to be able to use here as I head through the carousel once again. And if the tire blows out, this is going to be the time it'll do it. Nope, we're still still good. How is the t the tire's completely gone? The tire is completely gone according to the the How is it still going? How is it still going? Well, regardless, we've got Graham Rahal finally closed me down here. Still hasn't popped. Used another push to pass. I've now got two left as we head up to start lap 14. Again, the wheel not having it down the main straightaway. Car felt good through there. Down all the way into second gear. On the throttle. The other good thing about this is the car is getting light because of the lack of fuel in it. I did not take a full fuel load, a full load of fuel, full fuel load of fuel, huh, David? So that might be helping my pace just a little bit. Versus the AI, who when they stop may have taken an entire load of fuel. But I'm not privy to the strategies of other teams, so I wouldn't know. I've actually gapped Ray Hall. I've gapped him throughout this lap. Well, these Firestones are magical. They've got to be. The magic Firestones are just lasting and lasting and lasting. So, okay, well, we'll hold off Ray Hall for now. I don't know how long we can do it. Or how long we can continue to do it. But right now, it's looking pretty good right now. My defense right now is just drive the car. And hope nothing particularly stupid happens here. Ray Hall's closing in. We're on lap 15. We're going to have one to go next time by. So two laps remaining here at Road America. And Ray Hall's starting to mount the charge. He's back there. He's looking. He's closing it in the draft. Again, the AI seemed to gear a little bit higher here on this track. At least the Chevy car certainly seemed to be higher geared as there goes Ray Hall off the course. Just a little bit. So I got the car fishtailing out of the corner right there. Ray Hall still closing in. Oh, this may be it. This may be it. I don't know if I can hold him off. Oh, here comes Ray Hall. Gonna have to burn a push to pass. Gonna really cut him off there. Heading into the kink, which I did. Boy, the car did not like that. And Ray Hall loses, loses time. I don't know what he did. I have no idea what he did. Maybe a reaction to my blocking, but oh, I went out over the curb, thankfully. Held it together, didn't uh, high side the chassis on the curb because that just would have made it significantly worse. Down a couple of gears, taking it very easy. Well, David Land and the Magical's Firestones are going to have one lap to go here at Road America. Got two cars now behind me. 
Uh, obviously, Ray Hall is one of them. Don't know who the other one is. The wheel really, really shaking hard. In turn one, down to third gear. The other one is uh, Elio, maybe? Oh, maybe it's Ryan Hunter Ray. It's actually probably Ryan Hunter Ray. I saw a yellow car, and I just used my final push to pass stupidly right there. So I'm going to have to have an amazing final sector as Ryan Hunter Ray and Graham Rahal are beginning to bear down on me. Which I did. Hunter Ray and Ray Hall are still continuing on their personal battle. Three Americans doing battle here for seventh place in the race. Still holding on to it right now. Got to conquer the carousel one last time. It wasn't amazing, but it was okay. Ray Hall and Hunter Ray are in their own battle, so I think I may be good heading down the back straightaway. This is when the tire's going to blow out. I just know it as I run across the grass. How am I going faster? How is this possible? Well, that's certainly not going to help. Here come Ray Hall and Hunter Ray. Well, that's not going to help me very much. Ray Hall's really going to send it in here. He goes across the curb, actually cuts Hunter Ray off. And so, it's okay. Somehow, the magical Firestone tires make it to the finish. And we'll bring it home, I believe, seventh, unless uh, some cars fell out of the race. And that's a pretty good result. So no real surprise on a road course, it's Will Power taking the win over James Hinchcliffe and getting on the podium is Simon Pagino. So yeah, he had a fast car, so I kind of feel good that I was able to hold him off. Tony Kanaan in fourth, Michaela Lotion in fifth, uh, then we got Joseph Newgarden, me, Graham Ray Hall, then Ryan Hunter Ray, Juan Pablo Montoya, Connor Daly, Scott Dixon, and bringing up the rear is Alex Tagliani, who has not even finished the race. Of course, he was involved in that incident down there at Station 5. Well, that was a wild one here at Road America. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit the like on it, and definitely be sure to like it for those magical Firestone tires that somehow managed to last the entire race despite the front left tire being absolutely destroyed for the vast majority of the race. This was a fun one. This was very, very competitive. I would definitely highly suggest uh, racing IndyCars at, on uh, Road America and Project Cars too, because this was just about as competitive and exciting a race as uh, as you could hope for. Just make sure your uh, uh, pit crew changes the tires. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. But be sure to subscribe for more IndyCar, Motorsport, and Project Cars Tube content. And we'll see you in the next video.